Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I have a time-lapse video for you guys of a painting I did over the weekend. It's an elf with sunflowers that I made uh, on, a, on a wood slice. As you can see in the video, I'm uh, coating the wood slice with a few layers of gesso and in between I'm using a hairdryer to speed up the drying process because, you know, it's not fun watching paint dry, especially in a video. Normally I wouldn't be using uh, gesso on wood, but these wood slices are lacquered um, because that's how I bought them, which gives them a very nice finish, but it's not very nice to paint on. So the gesso just gives a, like something to, for the paint to bind to. And once I've built up enough gesso on the wood, I start using uh, just a normal pencil to sketch on. I had already uh, made a preliminary sketch in my sketchbook uh, beforehand using reference, and now I'm just copying it on to the wood. Depending on how complex uh, the sketch is that I want to transfer onto my painting surface, I would use a grid, but because with this I just want to do something fast and it didn't really need to look like the person that I use as a reference, I just uh, did it, you know, freehand. For this painting in particular, I didn't really have a plan. Um, I had made two other wood slices with elves on them before that, and uh, those were two lady elves, so I knew I wanted to do uh, a male one for once, because I'm always drawing women. And um, also the colors for those two were uh, red, green, and purple, so I knew I wanted to contrast it so that they would fit nicely together, so I knew I wanted to do something yellow, and I thought, well, what flowers are yellow? Uh, sunflowers, so I thought that would be nice. Other than that, there wasn't really a great uh, concept behind it at all. <laughs> uh, lately, I'm just trying to like draw and paint things that are that make me happy and not concentrate as much on like what will sell my Etsy shop because even though I want my Etsy shop to be successful I I would like to be successful doing things that I also enjoy drawing so lately I've been just trying to think about like what kind of art really makes me happy and what kind of art do I like looking at and uh, that's basically everything fantasy related so I'm trying to focus on that. As you can see here I'm just using plain watered down acrylic paint over the pencil sketch. It's kind of blurring out the pencil lines uh, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to put a lot of layers of acrylic on it anyway. And you can see that the <laughs> hair dryer is just speeding up the entire process. It looks stupid, but it's effective when working with acrylic paint. When I start with the colors, I really just lay down the basic colors uh, before I do anything else. I don't really think about where the shadows are going to be because I kind of, uh, you can see that in the pencil sketch. Uh, and meanwhile, I'm looking at the reference. But I'm not trying to concentrate on the reference too much because I notice that when I do concentrate too much on it, I lose a lot of like life in the drawing and it starts to get really stiff. But I have really noticed that my drawings have gotten a lot better ever since I've just been using loose references. This also um, makes sure that you don't keep drawing the same faces over and over again as, you know, I do a lot when I'm not using a reference. When I just started drawing seriously in way back in the day and the days of deviant art, I tried avoiding using reference as much as possible because I felt like for myself that if I used a reference, I wasn't talented an artist and I absolutely needed to know how to draw all these things by heart. But then a few years back when I actually started painting, like with paint and not digital, I uh, did an internship with two painters and they always use absolutely reference for everything and they also told me that I basically needed to start using reference because only when I know how things look in real life I can start to stylize it. So for the duration of that internship, I decided I would focus on realism and I would start out with picking pictures that I liked. Usually it was <laughs> like movie related and I would choose a photo that had very interesting lighting because I really liked when like the lighting and the shadows had different colors in it. It just seemed very interesting to paint. But the photos I would choose would usually have like a person in them, so I realized quickly that you really need to focus on the very fine details in realism because even if the nose is like a centimeter lower than, or even a millimeter lower than uh, in the original picture, it won't look like that person. So I really needed to concentrate on really painting exactly what I saw. 
The most fun part for me of the realism though was uh, picking up on the subtle colors in the picture because you know when you look at a skin tone you think it's not like you would think it would just be like salmon tone but in reality there's a lot of different tones like greens and purples and i just thought that was so interesting and if it was hard to see for me i would literally just open photoshop and use the eyedropper tool to see like what color it is and because i did that so much i've really gotten a feel of like the colors that can happen and that's also gotten me into the habit of just throwing random colors in my paintings because, you know, it just gives so much more life to the painting in general. I continue to concentrate on realism, but um, after a few years I realized that, you know, painting is completely different than drawing. And I really miss drawing because I was only using references and every time I would want to draw, I uh, I had to find a good reference photo like in the exact pose that I wanted and you know if I had an idea in my head I would spend hours and hours you know trying to find the perfect reference photo so I really needed to reteach myself on how to draw anatomy and I've been doing that and I've been drawing in my sketchbook a lot but then you know I noticed I miss painting a lot and I've really been trying to combine the two so lately I've been just trying to focus on the combining of my paintings and drawings. It's been a real process because basically it's making a whole new art style. And I'm still struggling with uh, my line work because in my sketches the lines and how I like use cross hatching and stuff in my sketches that's really hard to portray with paint so I'm trying to find like a fair middle ground with that. And as you can see here in the video, I'm just trying to use like line work of different weights because I feel like that's a good way to bring like my drawing style flowiness back to the painting. And it also just really brings everything together and it's really reminiscent of my digital artwork that I used to make. I would really focus a lot on line work on the top layer and then color underneath it. So, and now I'm just going over it. But right now I'm not using it as the final step. I'm just using the lines to seal off the different areas so that it's more clear for me to see where one object begins and the other one ends. That way when I go over with the color wash, it doesn't blur that out even more. Even though I wanted the main color of this piece to be yellow, I really wanted to portray the warmth of the sun and the sunflowers, so that's why I added a lot of like warm orange tones. Just so that when you look at this piece, you can also feel the actual temperature that the character is feeling. And it also just gives a little bit more dimension to the, the color in general. But to be honest, that's not really something I planned out before I started this piece. It's just something that occurred to me while I was painting that that might be a good idea. But that's something you can do with acrylic paint because you can just go over with a very light wash of the color. When you're doing something like oil paint or, uh, you know, watercolor, you really do need to figure those things out beforehand. And seeing as this painting was just meant to be for fun and to help me relax, I really didn't you know, want to plan anything ahead because I just wanted to come naturally and I really do enjoy making those paintings more. And somehow I noticed that a lot of people enjoy those paintings more as well. Maybe because it's just less stiff and it just flows more and I, I guess people can really see when you overthink something as well. But like I said, I think it really depends on the function of the piece and what it's for. If it's just for decoration or is it an assignment for a client, you know, and what kind of material are you using because then sometimes, you know, more planning is warranted. Though lately for me, i have really just trying to find the joy back in painting and drawing and just trying to enjoy it because, you know, I do overthink things a lot and then I end up really not liking what I'm making and then I never finish it and that's a shame really. So I'm just trying to focus on things that I want to make and not try to make it like a masterpiece and when I don't try, I feel like I get the best results. That's something that my teacher would tell me at uh, art school as well and that would really frustrate me but hey, you know, I guess they were right. So as you can see in the video, I'm almost done here, so I'm going to thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble on about stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you is there anything else you want me to talk about in the future, please let me know. 
Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I guess that's what you're supposed to say at the end of the video, right? <laughs> Bye! <laughs>